Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode. This is your host, Davy Kim. Hi, Greg. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, David. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I saw that you are from Australia. Yeah, yeah, originally from Australia, from Sydney. Oh, the, you came from the beautiful place, a beautiful paradise. So what made you leave a paradise in Down Under and then come to the Kenya, Africa? Well, the paradise in Kenya, um, uh, you mean as well. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's also, <laughs> like my home country, Kenya is a very beautiful place. Uh, you know, I've, I've been living uh, and working in East Africa for about seven years and uh, doing business on the continent for 10 years. And uh, look, it's, it's, uh, it's a great adventure and there's a lot to build, a lot of interesting opportunities. So it's, uh, yeah, it's primarily um, because I think... Uh, I think I can combine my, my, my love of building things with uh, my love of, of adventure. And, uh, oh. and Australia is, uh, is a place well known to me uh, that okay. I love, but it will be there when I get back one day. Got it. So you consider the Kenya is also another paradise, different paradise, right? Absolutely. What a beautiful okay. country. Yeah. Uh, I want to see that, that paradise someday in the future. Oh, you must come. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll look after you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, why don't you start off by... Uh, telling us a little bit about yourself, your background and your journey to founding the Coco Networks. Sure, sure. So, um, so uh, uh, I mean, I, my background's um, not that interesting. I, I, um, <laughs> I trained, um, trained in Australia um, in, in finance, accounting, these sorts of things, and then uh, in software uh, mm -hmm. in, in a startup there, and then uh, decided I wanted to um, learn about the world uh, and spent um, uh, spent uh, a long time looking at businesses to get involved in, to set up uh, in, uh, in, in Latin America, in the Middle East, in uh, Asia and in Africa. So I got, got fascinated with uh, emerging markets. And, uh, and so, uh, so, so it's really the, 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 the vast majority of my career, um, you know, uh, for the last um, uh, sort of 22 years or so, um, I've, been, uh, uh, I've been focused on, uh, you know, really on emerging markets um, and, uh, set up some business with some folks in um, in different parts of the world, in the Middle East, in India, in Brazil, uh, and then yeah, the last decade has been uh, has been very Africa focused. And and Coco, uh, Coco is a technology company um, based uh, in Kenya and in India uh, that uh, is uh, is uh, think of it as a an Asian style new retail platform. Uh, mm -hmm. So so working uh, we're a consumer platform working with the assistance and support of small shopkeepers. Um, so we have a network, a dense network of shops in uh, Nairobi, 700 shops, uh, and uh, that we rebrand, we partner, it's an agency model with the shopkeepers. And then we install technology that helps them sell uh, basic needs at very, very low cost uh, in a way that undercuts uh, uh, the other, uh, the other co competition uh, and uh, delivers them a quality of life upgrade. Uh, and so we, we do that in partnership with very large suppliers of those products. Uh, and so uh, as, an, as, as the first example, really the focus of the company um, for, for, for many years has been launching the first product within uh, ethanol cooking fuel. So mm -hmm. it's within the cooking energy market. Um, mm -hmm. So households will spend 10, 15 plus dollars per month on, on energy that goes into food, uh, something we all do every day. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, they're spending that on on, on uh, charcoal or kerosene. Yeah, uh, 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 charcoal is is produced through deforestation, which yes. is um, which is extremely destructive. Uh, and kerosene, we all know. Uh, and so it's it's uh, it's it's a it's a basic everyday habit of cooking that is actually killing people. Yes. Um, driving huge environmental destruction at its expense. Yes. Uh, yeah. And so what we've done is we've introduced a um, clean fuel solution that is delivered through this network of 700 stores. And in fact, in the, the, form, the form factor is a, uh, is a liquid fuel ATM that we mm -hmm. install inside the shop. Uh, the ATM is a, you know, it's a fuel ATM, it's a digital media device, it's an e-commerce kiosk, it's a multi-purpose uh, uh, machine about the size mm -hmm. of a tall, thin Coke fridge. It goes inside the shop and then- So it's, a, it's an unmanned machine, automatic machine, unmanned. Yeah, self-service yeah. ATM, yeah, okay. but, but inside the shop. So we, we, you know, our team up with the shopkeeper 
um, requires them to look after it uh, and from a security point of view, et cetera, but it it's, uh, doesn't, doesn't need a, an attendant. Uh, and so mm -hmm. customers will come in with their own canister, a special smart safe canister that we mm -hmm. manufacture and they dock it in and it recognizes them just like an ATM card will, checks the cloud and says, look, yeah. please enter your pin and then sees your balance and then dispenses fuel. And then they go and they use that with their special stove, which we also manufacture. Um, yeah. and, uh, and then so we, we then have a fleet of trucks that do the last mile distribution uh, with a piece of our hardware on the back. And then the fuel is stored underneath shell stations in Nairobi. And so we have a partnership with uh, Vivo Energy, which is the company that licenses the shell brand in Africa. Uh, and so we've really built all of the hardware um, yes. to enable our shopkeeper partners to beat the dirty fuel competition and deliver a major experiential uplift at a lower cost. And uh, and so that's that's working really well and scaling, and that gives us uh, you know gives us a, a really really large and and growing um, customer base that 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 likes what we do, that really likes us, that trusts us. Uh, and so that we use that we use the customer base, the retail network. Uh, we really view that as a as a platform. Um, uh, that enables us to, um, you know, to go and solve uh, other, uh, other, other uh, uh, challenges that, that households that, that, that our customers have in terms of the price that they, they pay for everyday goods. Yeah, so that's yes. our strategy. Yeah. yeah, sounds very interesting. But uh, uh, in order to replace the, I mean, uh, current option, African people use the uh, cooked, uh, I mean, for cooking, right? Kerosene and the charcoal, so... How competitive, how competitive is your, I mean, the ethanol in terms of price? Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's about 40% cheaper than charcoal now. Oh, really? Um, about 40% cheaper than charcoal. Um, uh, and then, uh, and then uh, the appliance is, is, is really low cost. Um, we're able to lower the consumer price of the, of the appliance through, through carbon. So we, we yes. produce carbon credits and we... Ah, yes. Yeah, Last yeah. time you told me about that, right? Carbon credit, right? Yeah, it's that's a right. creative so we, idea. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it's 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 the you know it's the markets, the Kyoto Protocol, and now the Paris Agreement operating as designed, enabling consumers in developing countries to access renewable energy technologies, um, and uh, and lowering lowering the the retail price. So we we embed the um, environmental benefit, the economics of the environmental yes. benefits are embedded into the consumer offering. Uh, and that enables us to, to scale faster and customers to afford it, even poorer customers. And so that's the business. We, we um, create this really interesting flywheel um, whereby uh, customers buy the appliance and then they come back every day and they buy fuel. Um, and we, we, we learn a lot about them. We ask them, look, what else can we help you with? And then, and then, 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 we, then we add new categories. You know, that's, that's essentially yeah. the play. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, so understood your business model and the problem you're solving. Yeah, that sounds like a very interesting, uh, great business platform, right? Yeah, it's, it's fun. It's mm. taken a long time to, mm -hmm. to build because we've had to build. Um, how, long, how long have you run the business now so far? We formed the business in, uh, we founded it in 2014. So this is um, sort of year seven. And, okay. uh, and the, but the, the actual commercial launch um, was uh, was was less than eighteen months ago yeah, okay. of, the, of the network and in, in the network of shops and of uh, in Nairobi we only formally launched that year about a year and a half ago just before Corona started yeah. um, and uh, because it took many many years to build the hardware um, mm -hmm. uh, we had to, we invented everything we patented everything and then now we, when you build the hardware then you've got to go and build the factories to make the hardware um, oh. and then you've got to so go you build, build a factory to make the hardware. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we own, that's we own. a lot of things. So uh, I, yeah. that's a question I want to ask you, actually. So uh, you, you have, what kind of devices and appliances you have? You have a uh, cooking stove. Yeah. And then yeah, what it's, else? It's an ATM machine, you call ATM machine. Yeah, and yeah, you, you, you manufacture everything by yourself, not with a contractor, contract manufacturer? We, we actually do it all in-house um, in, okay. in both Kenya and India. Um, and so there's the, okay. there's the consumer hardware, which is the... Um, which is the, the two burner modern ethanol cooker along with the smart canister. So that comes in a kit in a box. Um, and then we make um, three pieces of uh, last mile fuel distribution hardware, which is the Cocoa Point fuel ATM. Yes. Yes. Right, then we have, uh, we have a thing called a smart tanker system, which goes on the back of a fuel truck um, and enables us to control the flow of fuel into the, the fuel ATMs and, and, and manage that complex logistics operation. And then we have a smart depot system which goes on a petrol station 
that enables us to control the flow of fuel from the underground storage tank into the truck. And so all of that is managed through a network operations center. Um, so we've built all the software because we have about 15 sensors in every fuel ATM that are sending you know, millions yeah. of data points per day. And so we are able to manage remotely um, with, with a team that's actually working out of their you know, living rooms and bedrooms since COVID. The network right. operations center went distributed through software. It's amazing that we were able to keep it going. Yeah, but it's, uh, very, very interesting. Uh, if I, we know each, you knew each other, for example, then I gave you advice not to manufacture enough. You can work with a contract manufacturer. If you do everything, it's a, it's a lot of job for you. You need to grow the yeah. business, focus on the something. But yeah. I think it uh, feels like you are the super versatile handyman. <laughs> Well, I can't know. It's it's my team. I'm I'm not the engineer yes. in the team. Uh, everyone else is. Um, anyway, you know, but I mean, your team is a super versatile. No, it's interesting. Contract manufacturing is something that we we looked at in some depth. Um, and uh, and uh, it does make sense at a certain scale. You know, we've built um. Ah, uh, yeah, that is another a, issue. Yeah. 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 So we've built our first factory, which is twenty thousand. Uh, units per month, um, in, in, which is in, this is in India, in in, Guj in Gujarat, in a place called mm -hmm. Sanand outside Ahmedabad, and so that was factory one. That's about seventy thousand square feet, about two hundred and fifty staff, um, and but but we're we're now we're now selling more than we can produce. Um, yeah, the sales have exceeded. We're up. We're we're now above that twenty thousand a month from the sales, and 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 uh, and so that's a that's a bottleneck. And so in fact, we started the build on factory two which will, uh, factory two will, will go live in July this year in a few months. Um, and so that will enable us to increase the, the scale up to maybe, you know, 50, 60,000 a month. Um, and so that's, that's, that's good. And then, and then eventually beyond that, we either build factory three ourselves or we go and uh, we go to contract manufacturing, but you really need to be talking about 80, a hundred thousand units a month and contract manufacturing. And, yes. uh, and, and you can't, you know, this is a, it's a, a difficult when you try to build a whole new industry. Um, yeah, in the beginning, yes, uh, you, the minimum lot is a huge challenge for the country manufacturer. How many people do you have? Uh, we have uh, seven hundred, maybe seven hundred and fifty uh, people in the team. Um, huge, but, but, huge, uh, huge team. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and it's a team of entrepreneurs, and you know, we, right. we have. Um, I think we have just under forty people in our leadership team. Um, right. you know, uh, divisions, operating companies, um, you know, uh, four co-founders. You know, we we it, it, we knew from the outset that it's a it's a big a big swing that what, what we're doing and requires a really you know really large breadth of capabilities. I, I had an interview with the head of international investment at the SBI, a SoftBank Investment, mm. based in Tokyo. Uh, we they opened the office in the Africa. I think this month, I don't know where they already opened it or not. But oh, really? uh, they, uh, he and I had a discussion about the opportunity in Africa. He said that the, uh, in Africa, very different job. I mean, the other market is to disrupt the traditional industry with the technology idea. But in Africa, is not, probably not much thing to disrupt. You need to build the infrastructure ecosystem from the scratch. So, very different yep. kind of job for the entrepreneur in in Africa. Absolutely, that's that's right. that's that hits it on the head. That's very insightful. You know, mm -hmm. you 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 know, it's it's a place for builders, um, mm -hmm. and and, uh, and yeah, if you you know, the opportunity is to look at things from first principles, um, and to bring in modern technology or to invent, you know, using you know advances in technology, invent new products and services. But often, yeah, often you're having to play. Um, you know, play multiple roles and build multiple functions that in other countries, um, you know, that by definition are more developed, right? You, you can mm. just go and subcontract, you can put out a tender, you can, you know, right. and there's just a very strong ecosystem of, 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 of providers, whereas, um, whereas that's not the place. Kenya's, Kenya's pretty, pretty strong in, in, compared to some of its peers. Uh, some of its neighbors and so on that have uh, that are less developed um, from a commercial ecosystem. It's quite strong here, so you don't have to do everything in house. Yep. Um, but but uh, in general, compared to other ecosystems yes. where you, I, you other developed them, like uh, just focus on one thing. That that advice that um, you know American uh, uh, investors might give, which is oh, you've got to focus on just this one thing. That doesn't uh, really work. Yes, it doesn't yes. really translate that well to cannot um, cannot to the do the plug ecosystem. and play, right? Cannot yeah, do the exactly. plug and play. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Totally agree. So sometimes I, based on my experience, because I observed that I work with a, a lot of entrepreneur, business owner, medium SME or large company in many parts of the world. I think uh, it's, uh, in fact, uh, if you can find a lot of chances, opportunity to collaborate with a company, large company from the developed world, I mean, 
between the African entrepreneur and then the entrepreneur or the uh, or the large company conglomerate uh, from developer. There could be huge synergy, I think, huge synergy because the guys who are running the Apple, Samsung, Toyota, they don't have this kind of experience, right? Connect the last mile and then the try to communicate the, I mean, the farmers and ordinary people in the rural area, Kenya, they don't have this kind of experience, right? Also, I yeah. told you the last time that I, I, I know, came to know that uh, one of the largest conglomerate from Korea, they uh, studied uh, like, uh, probably cassava farming in Indonesia. Probably, I, I remember they made investment like a couple of 10 million US dollars into farming and working together with a small scale farmer and mm-hmm. smallholder farmer or the outgrower. At the end of the day, the, they went out of the business, bankrupt, because the, they don't have a collaboration. They don't understand each other. So mm-hmm. later, the bank, local banks who lend the money to that company, I mean, without even guarantee from the parent company, they need to rescue their business. So they, lo- was lo- they are, were looking for the Korean guy who understand, uh, I mean, local people and then the uneducated uh, workers in rural area who run the textile business so many years, so many decades. So they found the bank found that guy and then the, made a proposal. Can you, can you, I mean, the take over this company for nothing, but we are mm-hmm. going to the reschedule all the loan and the haircut everything. We just right. want to recover a little bit of loan from you. Are, are you interested? So he accepted it and then he made a turnaround. He made a turnaround. Yep. Yep. So this is a very different, probably, Large company like international conglomerate, they, they may not appreciate that these kind of people, right, who run the small factory in a rural area. But I think it's 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 not uh, cannot that kind of experience and skill cannot be replaced by the like high tech or the experience in the global company or something like that. Yeah, I think um, I think you're right. You hit the nail on the head. I mean, it's it's um we're all humans at the end of the day, but the the um. The, the problem when larger um, conglomerates, it's not Asians or, or you know, it's, it can be America. I've seen it with American um, multinationals. I've seen it with Europeans and I've seen it with Asian multinationals coming into, Australia, uh, into, into Africa. And the, the challenge is um, the guy wielding a 20,000 mile screwdriver, you know, mm. so the, mm. the, 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 instead of necessarily sort of getting behind um, the, the, the leaders that have, um, you know that have the insight and the, the, that are on the ground and really understand the market conditions. They attempt to, you know, wield control from HQ, um, yep. and then and they send they send a team, a country manager, whatever that doesn't really have the, um, you know, the ability to do um, to, to 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 change, right? right. What, what, the way things are done, to approach things differently, to innovate, or you know, to control the resources. Um, and it's and it's really a matter of sort of phoning up HQ um, every time you want to you know scribble outside the lines and uh, and and so that's that's that model just generally doesn't work and what I'd what I've what I've seen really work well um, and you're seeing some of the Japanese conglomerates doing it now um, is where they go and uh, and they look at uh, investing behind um, really doing learning investments uh, into mm. fast growing companies. But, uh, yes. But 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 doing it doing it with you know taking board seats and and even embedding uh, team members into you know so, but but the purpose is to help the larger organization learn what you know the market rather than trying to set it up as a subsidiary um, and sending guys from Tokyo or Germany yeah. or California yeah. or whatever and learning from first, you know, starting from first principles and making all the normal mistakes that everybody has to make when they go and they immigrate to a new place. So I think that that approach of, um, of, of adequately valuing the, um, the, 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 the leadership and the capability and the talent and the market knowledge of you know, teams on the ground that are, that are, that are successfully building. Um, mm-hmm. I think that's, that's, uh, that's the key. Yes. Agree. So do you have a co-founder? Yeah. Yeah. I have uh, three co-founders. Okay. Um, so, uh, how did you, uh, how did you find a co-founder or employ in the beginning? Just like a fundraising uh, uh, is a very difficult job for entrepreneur to find the right co-founder, right? Yeah. yeah it's, it's, um, I think it's harder than fundraising. I think harder than like, fundraising. Um, yeah, I think of it like marriage. Um, yes, you know, it, it's uh, which is which is harder than than, than fundraising. <laughs> right. Um, but but uh, 
No, I think, well, my, my co-founder specifically, um, well, we'd all worked together for a long period of time in other mm. ventures before we decided to start Coco. So that was, that was the key point. It wasn't a, um, it wasn't a, you know, putting a bunch of guys in the, in a room together that hadn't really, you know, okay. figured out the ways of working. And so. Yeah. I, a very idea. You, you did a little bit of a, I mean, exercise to play the game together in the past and then you know the, how you can to play together. Yeah. Right. No, yeah, exactly, and we, and in fact, we'd done that for some years. We'd we'd built um, we'd built other other companies together, uh, and so and we decided to you know very consciously come together and um, and build uh, build Coco, and mm. uh, and so you know why it's worked is because we all have um, we all have unique to each other unique capabilities. We all sort of come, you know you know uh, they're good at, at at areas that I'm not, and vice versa, um, and then we all have a deep amount of trust and uh, and and respect. Uh, and so there, the, that's how that's how it works. And then we all are pretty patient and, and good humoured. Um, and so yes. we we, uh, we understood this is going to take 10, 20 years. Um, yes. uh, uh, you know, uh, this is a long commitment. Um, and yes. so long as uh, so long as we're able to um, uh, you know make progress and and, uh, and and get the the things out of it uh, that we want, um, uh, uh, you know, in that journey, then uh, then it's a, it's a worthwhile worthwhile place to invest ten or twenty years. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You are running a very big team now, so mm-hmm. like uh, you don't you don't uh, run a soccer team, right? You running a, a General Motors factory now, right? <laughs> Large <laughs> team. So, Not quite, uh, but but yeah, feels feels. Uh, I mean, feels in terms of stage, in terms of stage, if you work with ten people, twenty people, that's a pretty much soccer team culturally, right? But mm-hmm. if you're running the 700, 800, 1,000, 2,000, that pretty much is uh, culturally more like. A, General Motors factory. Then, how do you find the smart people? And then, how do you transform the? I think uh, people with a different background before they join the company. I can imagine that everybody has a different background. Somebody coming from the uh, large company or the I mean, nonprofit company or uh, all different background. They have a different culture. But the startup, in order to grow the business, solve the problem on the ground every day. Uh, need to they need to acquire the different attitude mindset uh, to to work together. I mean, solving the problem together with you. So, how do you find the smart people, and how do you transform them into the your culture? Yeah, so that that is um, that is like fundraising. You yeah, know, in my mind, it's it's human. So everything raising. is like a fundraising or. <laughs> Everything is difficult. Or, or marriage. Yeah, it's, it's 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 very difficult. I mean, it's and we yeah. put a lot of time into it. Um, and uh, you know, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But but um, we we have been fortunate to build um, you know, a really strong team, uh, mm-hmm. it's a really strong leadership team, um, and it's a it's a very multinational team, um, a uh, very global team, uh, and and uh, and we've been lucky. Uh, and I I think um, what's helped us is the fact that there is uh, there's just a lot of um. Uh, th- there's a lot of shared alignment around our mission. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's it's uh, we have one of those businesses that um, when you walk it, uh, when you walk the business on the ground, when you see our customers, you go and visit their homes, you go and see the shopkeepers, you go and see the technology working. Um, it's it's amazing. It it really is amazing, and it's and uh, and I I can't I, I haven't yet figured out how to communicate that on a on a on a pitch deck, on a presentation, on a podcast. So it's it's it really is about getting people to see the real impact that we're mm-hmm. delivering. Um, that word is thrown around a lot, but it's it's uh, you know we're we're actually transforming people's lives with this solution. And when people see that and they see how 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 significant this could be a transformation in terms of the scale of lives that we could impact, in terms of the other um, solutions that we could overlay on the platform. Um, it's it's you know it's it's quite an addictive set of ideas, um, and uh, so people you know people want to to, to work for Coco. Um, they want to. They lean into it. Now, whether or not whether or not there's a personality fit and experience fit, um, uh, they're the things that that um, that, that are more um, that, that that require you know the science of it um, require uh, uh, you know thorough assessment and and, and 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 understanding whether or not there's a culture fit and so on. But but we start from a position where people really want to, you know, they have to, they, they like what we're doing. Maybe, maybe we're not offering a role that fits what they want. Maybe they want something more senior, but they really want to work with Coco. They really want to get on the, on the train. Um, and, right. uh, 
and that's uh, and that's that's difficult, you know, for, for technology companies in some parts of the world that are, um, you know, that are solving. Um, uh, guys, a guy I was talking to, a very senior technologist in India, was uh, I was talking to the other day, um, said, "Yeah, you know, guys are trying to optimize, um, you know, for a faster pizza delivery. You know, it's an interesting software problem, but it's it's, it's nowhere near what you guys are." Are offering in terms of in terms of um, the, the sort of challenges you get to work on, and I agree. You know, we, we spend a lot of time trying to you know smart people stuck in Silicon Valley, uh, trying to think about how to um, you know maximize advertising revenue, and not that that's not important, but it's it's it doesn't necessarily speak to the the soul of people who yeah. know that they can they can do a lot more um, and, and achieve a lot more actual usefulness with their own skills and their own brain and their own time on this planet right and so we 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 might not no, might not offer the 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 the, the, the crazy uh, uh, comp unfortunately yet of of those those big silicon valley companies but i i think that we can uh, we can hold our own when it comes to um opportunity impact uh, adventure uh, uh you know these other things that speak to human souls as well sounds like a good strategy so you try to give people your employee and colleague impression that uh, you can grow together, right? You can grow together and then share well, the value together, right? Well, it's 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 not just uh, it's not just an impression; it's fact. You know, we've got um, yeah. <laughs> yes. you know, we've got uh, guys, um, uh, you know, guys in our team. Um, I'm thinking specifically of a, a Kenyan engineer that's been with mm. us for more than five years, and now he's um, you know been promoted many times, and now he's uh, the head of a big department, running 60 guys under him. Um, right. uh, he's a he's a shareholder of the business through our options plan. Um, and uh, you know he's he's uh, you know we, we you know love the guy and he he loves Coco and it's it's a great yes. it's a great setup you know and and so we that that's what good looks like in my mind and, yes and, you know five years yeah. from now you know the guy probably is running running a, a country right, right. Uh, uh, running a network in a whole new country or something that sort of trajectory yeah. we think is possible yeah. yes yeah great plan great idea assuming that you meet with uh, I mean a uh, smart investor and. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you want to make a big bet on your venture, I mean, mm -hmm. share the value together. Say, mm -hmm. I don't know how, uh, let's say that 10 million or 50 million US dollar big money into mm -hmm. your business. Mm -hmm. Then uh, what do you want to do with that money to the, grow the business or transform or what is the priority in terms of investment? Yeah, yeah, good question. Um, so... I mean, it's 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 entirely around um, growth, and that growth is in uh, two directions. Um, one is one is uh, geographic expansion. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, right now we are, um, you know, we have a network that's 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 quite dense. It's operating in the Greater Nairobi metropolitan area, but only twelve percent of Kenyans live in that coverage area, and so we need to expand our network coverage uh, within Kenya, uh, and we think we can get that up to maybe sixty. Uh, or seventy percent over time, over a few years, we can actually grow a countrywide network that enables us to deliver physical and digital goods and services through through that network. So that's so definitely a big push um, around uh, around the geographic expansion. Um, that's that's underway. In fact, uh, we'll we'll uh, we'll we'll go live with our second city uh, later this year uh, in Kenya. And so so that's one area. Um, and then and then similarly, geographic expansion in new countries. Um, uh, and so that that involves, um, you know, the, the typical sort of early stage, um, time, you know, time consuming, not particularly costly uh, investments in developing up um, and working with government to get the right enabling policies, uh, and then and then uh, and then developing up um, the plan, and and uh, and then and then basically recruiting the team and, and going into those countries. But we're doing that through partnerships as well. So there's many different. Um, mainly sort of business families that operate in the FMCG um, uh, space uh, that have asked to license our technology or do a joint venture to bring it into their own countries. So there's that sort of expansion. And then yeah. there's, um, you know, and then there's new lines of business, new products that, that we can overlay onto the network. Um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, goods that flow through Coco stores in, in Nairobi. Um, and at present, only one of them is digitally retailed by Coco. It's it's the fuel, and well, two of them really, and the cookers. Um, and so our agents, are, you know, our agents are asking us, look, can we, you know, can we, can we, we, we see what you've done with with this very difficult FMCG called fuel? You know, can we do that with these other? Can can you help us, 
you know, lower costs and improve, improve sales in our business. And then a lot of, a lot of, you know, big companies here in Kenya approach us and say, look, we're seeing what you're doing here. You know, can we find a way with you to use you as a distribution platform to help us, to help us grow market share, to help us reduce, uh, you know, cost of, of, of distribution and improve our margins. And so, you know, there are um, a significant number of opportunities within retail and sort of Asian style new retail, um, uh, as well as uh, financial services, um, uh, content. There's a few different areas that we um, uh, that we that we uh, uh, are developing into, um, and that's uh, that's where a lot of that investment would go as well in the future. So really, sort of spreading our wings geographically, and then going deeper on the network itself on the platform. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. So, what is your long-term vision for Coco Networks? Yeah, we um. We think that that uh, that the platform itself um, can solve um, a huge host of problems in the fast-growing cities in in uh, emerging markets. Uh, and so, if you look at you know you look at the fastest-growing cities, they're all in they're all in emerging markets, um, and they all share similar challenges. Um, you know, uh, if we take the African context, it's massive urbanization, massive population growth, um, resource depletion, which is driving up the cost of energy commodities. Um, uh, and then there is, um, you know, informal retail, which, which is, which is sort of broken. Right. And so consumers in, in, you know, consumers in Nairobi, households in Nairobi will pay, you know, more for pretty much every part of their life, every part of their daily life, they'll pay more per unit than, than households in Sydney, London, San Francisco, even very wealth, very expensive parts of, of the developed mm. world. They'll pay more for electricity, they'll pay more for cooking energy, for bread, for milk, for flour, for, for um, uh, remittances, uh, for banking services, um, for internet. I mean, it just is, um, just is crazy how much we're asking, or how much sort of the system is, is, is asking uh, uh, households that have very low income to pay and so it's it's a real grind. It's really tough. Uh, yes. Life in the cities is really tough um, for the majority. And we think that uh, we can use technology to transform life in in the world's fastest growing cities, um, to fundamentally transform life and make it less tough, um, and make it uh, a bit easier, um, make it uh, cleaner, safer, faster. Um, uh, we can find a way to. Uh, uh, you know, lower people's household expenditure. We can find a way to increase incomes. You know, that's where we that's where we think um, the platform can go in the future. And so that's that's really the vision. It's it's to build a um, you know, is to build a a hundred year company. Um, yeah. That that we're not we're not sort of building it to sell it, but to build you know this this um, technology enabled um, infrastructure for life in the cities. Yeah. That's that's what we're looking at. Feels like uh, you, you you can continue to build something like Amazon.com for the everything in Africa. Yeah, I I, I don't think it's um I don't think the copy paste works. Um, yeah. Uh, but 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 definitely um we definitely we 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 think the solutions need to be built for these markets um, from first principles. Um, but the uh, what what we do admire about um, Amazon is is the focus on customers. Yes, um, you know, there's a there's a lot of ways to make money in um, in Africa um, yeah. that don't necessarily uh, that don't necessarily treat customers well. You know, yeah, also of... the Amazon.com is a very interesting part. Is uh, in many years uh, from beginning of the business, they didn't monetize anything for a very very long time. It is lucky for him to meet with a patient investor as well, but that is very difficult because everybody. I mean, human nature wanted to jump right into monetizing in their customer from day one, right? That's human nature. Yep. But the huge patient try to build and then focus on the customer experience instead of uh, closing a deal or transaction, right? That I think yep. uh, very helpful for long term growth of the company. Yeah, yeah and and you know, and, and and building you know building a brand. Um, people talk about brand a lot. Um, in, in this part of the world, I think that the brand is not about a, a logo and a marketing campaign. I think it's I think it's about customer service, customer um, experience, right? Customer yeah, experience. customer experience and customer service, and and you know the, the the expectations of consumers is unfortunately extremely low because they're let down every single day in most parts of their life. They're let down, and so if you can go in and do you know customer service, do a good job at customer service, something that would you know be 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 
be treated as um, you know mid range in in America, which is usually great customer service. You know, will right. be will be will be treated as just amazing. Never never before seen this sort of you know because the expectations of the the, the consumers are so low. And so if you can if you can deliver a great experience and you can deliver great customer service, you can solve problems when they arise really quickly and with respect to the customer, then, 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 uh, then people really love you. And then you, can, then you can find a way to solve other problems and deliver other services on top of that. But the, the challenge um, I've seen with a lot of um, you know, companies engaging has been that they've had a very um, uh, extractive um, mindset. You know, it's, it's uh, you know, if you look at, um, if you look at uh, telecoms is a good example, you know, companies um, will charge a higher per minute or per megabyte rate if you buy in smaller bundles. Yeah, and, and poor customers with informal income have to buy in smaller bundles. And so they earn more margin from the poorest people than they do from wealthier people. A vicious cycle, vicious cycle. Exactly, exactly. And just uh, and, and the, the customer constraint is they can't that's, afford- I think uh, that's an yeah. uh, issue with uh, like, uh, plug and play approach because i heard that about the data issue telco yep. uh i mean entered the african market they work with exactly same banks right bank lender yep. project finance yep. lender and yep. then they run the spreadsheet and yep. uh, but the purchasing power of african consumer is much much lower so but the, in order to pay back same loan period of uh, from the their their partner bank they need to charge huge money up front yep. right so uh, that's a, they, yeah. they try to plug and play, then it doesn't work, right? They need to, yeah. I think, uh, completely change the business model and strategy. Then yep. they, can, they can manage the ecosystem. They can be yep. a dominant player in the market. I think that's, that's, that, right. that's the yeah. way. Yeah, yeah. And, and look, you know, lending is the same. Kenya has a, has a proliferation of, of lending apps uh, charging 15% per month, 20% per month, 10% yeah. per month. Um, it, it's you know again the credit is constrained and so they can make a business doing it but um, I can guarantee that 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 doesn't bring them a lot of love from customers a lot of you know it, it's uh, 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 you know gambling people get addicted to gambling so they'll borrow from the gam the, mm. the, the the digital loan shark and then they'll mm. gamble with that money and you know, so there's just, there's a lot of negative yes. to use technology yeah. that don't really help people and and I uh. think that they might be um, they might be short-term profitable, but um, and a little bit extractive in mindset. But uh, ultimately, they're not going to be the businesses that win. Yeah. Let me ask the last question: so, Who is the nicest person you have ever met in your life, except for your wife? <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a really interesting one. Uh, I, I have to think. Um, uh, well, I mean, yeah, I, I um, still your wife. Can, no, no, no. I mean, you know, definitely my wife. Um, <laughs> you should be listening. In case you're listening, <laughs> yeah, honey, yeah, it was yeah. it was you, but he disqualified you. Um, <laughs> no, there was a guy, a guy that I remember um, very, very clearly. Um, uh, it was in 2005, um, mm. and I was uh, backpacking uh, mm. uh, around southern and eastern Africa, and uh, and I went in, and I was I went into Zimbabwe, uh, mm. and it was. Um, it was in the middle of the, uh, the the one of the regular crises they have, and so there was a. It was difficult um, getting dollars, uh, getting you know the banks were were shut, you know the ATMs were shut, um, uh, and uh, there were shortages of petrol, there were shortages of everything, and and uh, and I only had a limited amount of physical cash with me, and I realized within a couple of days, as in Harare, I realized that. Um, that uh, I, I got to get out because I can't get cash. Um, the, the remittances were down, and uh, and I, I was stupidly I should have bought a wad of cash when I you know from from uh, from from Zambia when I crossed over, and so I decided to make a, a rush for the border, go down to South Africa, and uh, and I made it to um, a border town um, uh, and uh, just before night, uh, with you know with no money, um, zero money. I had bank cards that had cash in my you know, bank somewhere in the ether but I had no actual physical cash and uh, and I was I was sort of you know it's getting dark and I didn't quite know what to do um, uh, I, I felt a little bit helpless um, and uh, and and I was sort of you know sitting um, under this tree and trying to think about it and, and a nice guy came up and and, and just made a conversation uh, he didn't want anything from me and 
and I explained uh, the predicament. And he said, well, it's, it's simple. You come and stay with me, you know? And, and, uh, and he took me in and he uh, gave me a nice meal and he, and he, uh, uh, and he put me, it was a very, very simple place. He put me uh, uh, in, the, in, the, uh, you know, in, the, in the corner, gave me a little mattress and, uh, and I was able to then, uh, you know, the next morning I was able to cross the border uh, wouldn't accept a payment um, uh, or in a promise to pay him to send him money, anything. He just said, no, 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 you know, you're my friend, you're my visitor. I think he's probably one of the nicest guys that I've ever come across. Uh, really, yeah. uh, really lovely guy. Yeah. Yeah. That's great experience. Mm-hmm. And also the, at the right timing, right? Right place. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You, you, yeah. You, you... Thank you very much for listening to this episode. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, to share with your friends, and drop me a review. Goodbye.